In today's video, we will continue with Langchain agents and we are going to build a production grade agent with which you can chat. We will need to look at some new concepts like agent executor, agent actions, agent finish, custom output parsers and we'll build our Langchain agent combining all of the concepts that we have learned up until now such as tools, memory, modification of prompt templates and these few new concepts that I just talked about. Now if you have no idea about any of the concepts like tools, memory, prompt template modification then I highly recommend that you watch the previous Langchain videos from the Gen AI and LLM projects playlist on this channel. Today's video builds up on the previous videos in this playlist and hence it's going to be a bit more nuanced and can be slightly challenging to understand. So I request you to be patient and stick around till the end of this video. I'm going to take you through some code that's available in a code file so you can easily run the code without having to worry about setting up an environment. The link for this file is in the description of this video so make sure you make a copy of it so that you can refer to it later on. So today we will be building an agent that can search for medical information on the internet. So we will build that functionality into our agent by enabling it to use DuckDuckGo search via a tool. But we will also be enhancing our agent using memory, which means it will be able to remember the problem that we have told it about and we will be able to carry forward our conversation with the context that we have given it. Now please note that in the very near future, we will create an agent that's fine-tuned on medical information and that will be way more effective than today's agent in answering medical related queries. And today's objective is not to create the best medical assistant agent, but to show you guys how tools and memory can come together with agents to create something really useful and awesome. So let's check out our code. We start off by installing Langchain since we will be working with Langchain agents. Then TikTok to be able to count the tokens spent during each LLM interaction. And DuckDuckGo search since we want to equip our agent with the ability to be able to search the internet for some answers. We have used DuckDuckGo search in many projects before as well. Then we import OS and set the OpenAI API key. And once we have all this set up, in the next section we are going to start building our agents. Then we're going to import quite a few things to be able to build our agent. We import tool that's going to help us define our DuckDuckGo search tool. Then we import three things that we haven't seen before on this channel. And the reason I'm introducing these three things in today's video is because in many core examples you will find these being used. Now let's talk about the first thing we import which is the agent executor. Which makes it easier for the agent to decide which tool to use in which situation and in what order. Now agent executors accept agents and tools and then decide what to use when. We will see this in action shortly. Then we have the LLM single action agent. Now what this does is it's designed to perform a single action based on the output of a language model. So it just interprets the output from an LLM and executes a single corresponding action and hence the name single action agent. The next is the agent output parser. It parses the raw output from an LLM and that output can be used to determine the appropriate action or response. So let me help you visualize how these three work together with the help of a diagram. The agent executor will manage the overall execution for us and it will call LLM single action agent to process the input. And this LLM single action agent will generate an output with the help of an LLM by passing on the input prompt to the LLM and getting a response. Then the raw output from the LLM single action agent is passed on to the agent output parser which interprets and parses it to determine the next action or response. And if the output indicates a specific action such as a query search, then the agent executor will ensure that the corresponding tool is invoked. Okay, so now we know how these three work together and why we're importing them. Basically, they'll help us work with agents in a more structured way. Then we import string prompt template since we will be setting a prompt template for our agent. Then we import OpenAI since we are using OpenAI to power our agent and LLM chain which is a crucial concept of Langchain. And if you're not sure how LLM chains work, you need to check out one of the videos on Langchain in this playlist where I'd explain different chains that are available to us as part of Langchain. Then we import DuckDuckGo search because we want our agent to be able to access the search and look for answers. Then we import list which is a generic type for lists and using this our variables can store list of certain types. We've already seen union in the previous video. This is just to help us to be able to store different data types in our variables. Next we import agent action which basically represents an action that our agent will take 
and agent finish, which represents the final result of conclusion of an agent's execution, which also indicates that no further actions are needed. We've imported RE because it helps us with regular expressions, and we finally import Langchain, which this whole video is about. Now that we have all our modules and libraries, we are ready to build. Then let's set up our search tool. In the tools list, we define it and we send the search.run in the function field. And search is basically our DuckDuckGo search run function. So we run the search function with the query, how can I treat a sprained ankle? And this answer is available to us in the obj variable. And when we print it, we can see it was able to search for the information completely and also has a solution for us. And as you can see, it says, put some ice in a kitchen towel and place it on your foot for about 30 minutes. Then I again run the query, but I use it along with the tag of the website that I want to search on, which is WebMD. And I again ask it, how can I treat a sprained ankle? And this time I get a very detailed response from WebMD, which is pretty awesome. Next, you'll see some lines of code where we're actually doing something really awesome. We're creating a wrapper on top of our DuckDuckGo search tool, and this wrapper just searches on WebMD. So if you look at the search results variable, that's equal to search.run, and we're passing the input text as a dynamic variable to webmd.com. And in the tool definition below, you see we pass this wrapper as the function to be called. Now our agent can use DuckDuckGo search via a tool for finding answers on the internet. But more specifically, it can use this WebMD wrapper on top of the DuckDuckGo search tool. Until now, we've been calling our search functionality directly, but now it's time to create our agent. And before that, we need the base template. So we set our template where we are asking the agent to act as a compassionate medical professional. And we tell it that it has access to the following tools and we're passing the tools we just created as a dynamic variable. We've also given it a format to follow where we mentioned that it should take action based on the tools it has. Now to set up our prompt template, we create a class called custom prompt template, which is a subclass of string prompt template. Now in our template variable, we have already set our template in string format and our list of tools is also being passed here. Now guys, please note that this formatting is completely optional and you should only use this when you're building something for production or something for a client. Now I'm just showing you how you would go about formatting everything properly. Remember how when I showed you the agent's output in the previous couple of videos, we saw that the agent takes an action which sometimes is the tool that we have provided it and it also usually outputs its observations, meaning what it is thinking. And based on this observation, it takes an action. So we're just going to format all of that as well. So from the arguments received, we extract intermediate steps and these steps are tuples of agent action and observation. And this can be seen in the next line where we iterate over intermediate steps using a for loop and we get each action and observation and we append each action's log and its corresponding observation to the thought string. So basically we can think of it like this. Each iteration of the intermediate steps adds a new thought placeholder and each thought has the log of the action that the agent takes and its observations. So we have these nicely formatted thoughts, which are an amalgamation of action logs and observations. We are going to accumulate these thoughts and keep track of the agent's reasoning in something called as the agent scratch pad. Then we create a string listing all the tools and their descriptions separated by new lines. And we add the string to KW args under the key tools. Since we need a separate list of just the names of the tools, we create the tool names list next. And this function finally returns the formatted template. Then we create our prompt using custom prompt template and we pass in our formatted template along with the tools and the input variables. If you remember, we had imported agent output parser from Langchain in the beginning of this project. And this helps us in parsing the output of a large language model to determine which actions should the agent take. And we're going to use that to create our custom output parser. We're creating the parse method here that takes in a single argument, which is the LLM output. And that's basically a string containing the output from the LLM. And this method is going to return either an agent action or an agent finish, both of which are used to guide the agent's next steps. As you know by now that after we run agents, they usually enter into a flow where they perform multiple steps, which are actions, and they have some observations which they output as well. But it's important to know when an agent has finally resolved and is not going to run anymore. And also it has no future actions that it's going to take on. And this is where agent finish comes in. So next in our code, we're checking for the final answer in the LLM output that we've received in this function. The way to determine if the agent has finished is to check for the phrase final answer in the output. And this is what we do. So we look for the phrase final answer and we split the string after that. And we keep the value in the return values variable and we set our log parameter equal to the LLM output. Now, if you do not find the phrase final answer in the agent's output, that means the agent is still running and this means it has some more actions that it wants to execute. 
So our next step is to pass the output for any actions from the agent and that's exactly what we're doing with this regex expression. The re.search method is used to find the first match of our created regex in the LLM output. And if no match is found, then the value error is raised indicating that the output could not be parsed because this means that we haven't reached the end of the agent's execution. And this also means that we do not have a next action, which means there's some issue. And that's why the value error is raised. But if a match for action in the output is found, then the action name and action input are extracted using match.group1 and match.group2, and any surrounding white space is stripped with the strip method. Now that we have extracted the agent's action from the output, we can use it to create an agent action so that the agent can execute it. So we create an agent action by passing the action in the tool field and the action input in the tool input field and the log parameter is set to the entire LLM output that we had received. And our custom output parser will be available to us via the output parser variable. Next, let's set up our LLM as OpenAI and set up our LLM chain and set our tool names which can be extracted by looping over our list of tools using a for loop and accessing the name and defining our single action agent where we pass our LLM chain, output parser and the tool names we just extracted are passed to the allowed tools field and the agent is available to us in the agent variable. It's finally time to see our agent executor in action. So next we will set up our agent executor. So agent executor, as we learned at the beginning of this video, takes an agent and the tools that the agent can use and uses the agent to decide which tools to call and in what order. So you create the agent executor by passing in the agent and the tools and you run the agent executor with the prompt, how can I treat a sprained ankle? In the output, you see that a new agent executor chain has started and you get complete details based on all the formatting we have done. So you remember how we created a new field called thought and we can see that here as well as the action and the action input. So after the chain finishes running, you get the final answer and the final answer is quite accurate, which is cold compress for 20, 30 minutes. Now, if you wanted to dig deeper into how actually the whole process is running and how our agent actually reaches the final answer, we will run lang chain in debug mode and again run our agent executor with the same query to treat a sprained ankle. So in the output at the beginning, you see our input for the executor chain. Then you see the LLM start where we enter the LLM run with our input and the LLM shares the thoughts at LLM end where it's thinking that it needs to find out the best treatment for a sprain. After the chain slash end, you see the tool slash start where the agent has realized it's supposed to use WebMD. And after subsequent LLM slash starts and LLM slash ends, we reach the actual end of the chain and the process finally ends and we get a final answer. So now that we know how the process is working internally, we can again switch the debug to false. Now, as we discussed in the beginning of the video, we want to enhance our agent and we can do this by adding memory so that we can have a proper conversation with it so that it remembers the previous interaction we have had with the agent and answers questions more accurately. We start off by creating a template with history, meaning it takes into account the history of the interaction with the user. Then we create a custom prompt template and pass in the template, the tools and the input variables and create our LM chain. Then we set our tool names and initialize our agent with the LM chain output parser and the allowed tools, which are basically our tool names. Now comes the main part where we import conversation buffer window memory from Langchain memory. If you don't know how this works, please make sure you watch the agent memory video from this playlist. This particular memory type just stores the past few interactions between the user and the agent. Next, we create our agent executor by passing the agent, the tools and the memory and we run the same query, how can I treat a sprained ankle? And I get the answer, apply cold compress for 20, 30 minutes and that's great. Now that our agent has memory, I can continue the conversation with it without providing context again. So I ask it, what meds could I take? And amazingly in the answer, you see that the agent is talking about the sprained ankle and then talking about the meds like painkillers such as ibuprofen and topical creams and gels, etc. We take this conversation further by asking it, how long will it take to heal? And in the final answer in the output, you notice that the agent still has context and mentions that a sprained ankle will take four to 21 days to heal. This is awesome. We saw many new things today. And today's main takeaways are the agent executor, the agent actions, the agent finish, the custom output parsing and formatting the output from the LLM into thoughts, actions and action inputs. Finally, we also saw how to combine agent executor with tools and memory to create a killer production level chatbot. This is what you should build when you build a chatbot, an agent that has memory and can take the right actions with the help of custom tools. Now these videos take a lot of research and quite a lot of time to make and this channel is really small and the content I make is for a super niche audience 
and it doesn't get picked up by the algorithm since I don't use any clickbaits. So I quickly want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is you. Yes, you're the sponsor of this video and this channel is completely dependent on you sharing these videos and liking and commenting on these videos and most importantly subscribing to the channel because I don't have any partnerships or sponsorships. And this is a really small channel with extremely technical and niche content which doesn't really get served by YouTube. So make sure you share this with your friends and you like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and all that you've done for this channel and I'll see you in the next video.